my son's diapers stink, fertilizers stink. But let's see whether fertilizers investments will also stink in the future. Good day fellow investors. Today I will share with you my research that I have done in order to see whether fertilizers investments, especially potash investments, will be good in the long term because they are in the downtrend now. So when you start looking at a company like the Mosaic or Nutrien or something like that, you first look at the outlook for the main product that they are selling. As I have been already saying in my other videos, the outlook for food is good which means there will be more need for fertilizers. And I know that fertilizer prices are very low. Therefore, I was really interested in the sector. The outlook for fertilizers is very positive. If we look here, the expected global potash shipments will increase by about 20% in the next five years, which is a very, very strong trend and a positive tailwind for producers. There is one little problem with potash. As demand grows, so will supply grow. There is plenty of potash in the world, you just have to invest a lot of money to mine it, but there are some projects that will cover that increase in demand that we have seen. As you can see here, capacity will be below maximum production, enough to cover for the increase and the operating rate. If we look at potash prices, we can see that from 2008 to 2012, there has really been a spike because of a supply gap. However, given the new projects that are coming, I don't expect to see another supply gap in the next decade. And I expect potash prices to be stable at current levels. This means that if we look at potash producers, the current earnings they have, plus minus a little bit of operational efficiency improvements and so on, will be the result they will have in the long term. So if you want to invest in them, okay, look at the price to earnings ratios, what are their earnings, free cash flows, dividends, what is the sustainability of the dividend? And if you're happy with that, you might invest. But as from a sector perspective, there won't be much going on because of this. So BHB, Janssen project, it will cost about 14 billion. They have already spent almost 4 billion but the project is in delay, they have tried to sell it, a lot of things have happened because of low potash prices. However, if ever even potash prices increase, they could speed up, ramp it up in a few years and then you have, and then you have huge supply disrupting the sector. Belarus Kali Petriskovsky project could add 3 million tons. Another example of a project, Dana Kiel project in Ethiopia could add another 2 million to tons. Just in 2017, two greenfield projects, 1.4 million tons in Turkmenistan and 2 million tons project of K plus S in Saskatchewan. So for example, if we, you read what Mosaic has to say, they think that the supply and demand will be balanced. However, some other analysts think there will be Armageddon in potash prices. They will go down and even much lower than we are looking them now. That's a risk I'm not willing to take. I don't know whether I can trust the management of Mosaic. You never should trust corporate management. So the risk reward is really not rewarding for me. The risk is big if potash prices continue to decline due to oversupply. The upside is limited because if potash prices go higher, there will immediately be more supply coming also from the plants that have been idled in the past. So it's a little bit a negative situation there. Similarly, for phos phosphate, the market is in the same situation. Expected grow, expected grow in supply, both in de demand. This is another example of the huge disruption that can come. The Madan Vad project in Saudi Arabia for phosphate expects to produce 16 million tons per year when fully producing. Further, the Yorf Lasfar phosphate hub in Morocco will enable production to go from the current 3 million tons to 13 million tons. So that's 20 million additional tons. That's almost 40% of the market, which is something crazy and something to take into consideration when investing in such companies. So sweet and short, this is my story. Risk high, reward limited due to oversupply. So I won't be looking at those companies until I see, for example, at current prices or at even lower prices, I see a company like Mosaic with a 
price to earnings ratio of 10 and a dividend yield of 5%. Because when I see that prices can't go lower and I have a 10% earnings yield and a 5% dividend, then I like to invest. Now with price earnings ratios of 30, 40 with smaller dividends, with dividends being cut, I don't see them being reinstated to the previous levels. So it's simply too much risk to investigate deeper into the sector. I look forward to your comments. I hope you disagree with me. I'm always here to learn, to want to learn from more. But from my perspective, the fertilizer potash potassium segment is too risky with too little potential reward. That's how it is. I'll see you in the next video.